Hi everyone, it is Carol C.C. Miller, your positivity trainer, peace activator, and global hugger. Coming to you solo today, and I just realized as part of um, This Is Life, Beautiful and Messy, I did not schedule a broadcast in advance. And the system I use, you need to schedule it at least 11 minutes before you go live. So we're on my phone today, and we're going to just see how it works. But what I wanted to come talk to you today about is about living with an open heart. And are you currently living with an open heart? Are you wanting to try to live with an open heart? I just recently finished, actually yesterday, we did an online book club on a book, which I'm going to actually read a little bit from. It is called Into the Magic Shop, and it's by James Doty. And he is a neurosurgeon, so he talks about when he was a child going into this magic shop in California and learning how to truly use magic outside of card tricks. And it's basically the law of attraction principles. But what he really discovered in his life's journey, and he is a neurosurgeon at Stanford, is about living a life with an open heart and being compassionate. And the book, I highly encourage you to pick up and read yourself. But I'm just going to share a couple of parts of it that struck me the most. And I think it's easy for us to say we want to live with an open heart. Um, I know I sure do, and I don't always do it. Because usually when we step into fear, we're closing ourselves off for protection. But often it's protection that we don't really need to go to. So I'm going to describe he, in his book, he talks about meeting this woman, Ruth, who gave him four magical principles to use to be able to create the life that he wanted to live. And he was a young boy when he spoke with her on it. So let's see if I can hold the phone and um, choose what I'm going to read. But Ruth's first trick was release the, relaxing the body. And she talks about, um, I'm not going to read all of her instructions on that because I think it's, it's um, probably many of you have done this before, but it's really to get into a space of quietness and like focus on your feet and just send them love and then you focus on your ankles and you go up your body and you're just relaxing your entire body as part of a form of meditation. So that's her first trick that she uses. And then her second trick, which I just closed the book. That's, that's just really helpful, isn't it? Um, her second trick is about um, meditation and it's taming the mind. And so again, she gives some examples of how to tame the mind. Now, he did this as a young boy and took weeks for it to really incorporate. I think we can all, and I've said it before, you know, most things that we really want requires us to practice them in order to make them a habit and to really incorporate them into our life. So the third trick, which is the one that I liked the most, is opening your heart. And he talks in the book about how that really made the biggest impact on him as to be able to open his heart. So I'm going to share, hi Karan, how are you? I hope I said your name properly. So opening the heart, relax your body completely, as she says in trick one. Focus on your breathing and try to empty your mind completely of all thoughts. That, that's difficult, but that's where the practice comes in to help for you. When thoughts arise, guide your attention back to your breath. Continue to breathe in and out, which you've heard me say many times on these shows that when you're getting into a fearful space, take some deep breaths because often when we're in fear, we're um, constricting our body and our breath, so we need that oxygen to be able to move forward. Um, then is now think of a person in your life who has given you unconditional love. Unconditional love is not perfect or love without hurt or pain. It just means that someone loves you selflessly once or for a time. If you can't think of anyone, um, then think of someone in your life of whom you have given unconditional love. And again, I love how he points out the fact that unconditional love isn't about judgment. Like uh, I've talked about it before, you can unconditionally love somebody and then you choose how much you're going to participate in that person's life. So our conditions come upon our choice of participation. We can still love people regardless. Um, think of someone you care for and with intent and extend conditional love to that person. Understand that gift you are giving him is the same gift that someone gave you. So in your meditation, focus on somebody that you really care about and just send them love. Send them unconditional love. Don't add judgment on 
if they're going through a hard time right now or if they're creating problems, just send them love. Then the next step is as you are giving that same unconditional love to one you care for, think again how you feel when you have been given that unconditional love. So, you know, while you're giving unconditional love, wrap yourself up in it as well. The step number nine, again, reflect on how it feels to be cared for, protected in love regardless of your flaws and imperfections. And to think that person um, has that neutral feelings. Now with intention, extend the same unconditional love back to them. As you are embracing that person with love, wish them a happy life with a little suffering as possible. Hold that person in your heart and see their future, see their happiness. Let yourself be bathed in the warm feeling. So right now, his first steps are to focus on somebody that you feel has given you unconditional love, that maybe it's somebody that you've given unconditional love, and then go to somebody that you just care for and share some unconditional love with them. Now, here is the step that I find to be the most powerful. And it's so easy for us, and again, I do it myself from time to time. Now, I practice a lot, so I don't do it as much. But we tend to go into judgment and disdain and anger about people who are doing things that we don't agree with or are harmful to other people. So his next step is to now think of someone with who you've had a difficult relationship with or who you have negative feelings towards. Understand that oftentimes one's actions are a manifestation of their own pain. I, I truly believe hurt people hurt others. See them as yourself, as flawed, imperfect beings who at times struggle and make mistakes. Think of the person in your own life who you've given unconditional love. Reflect on how that love and acceptance impacted you. Now give that same unconditional love to the person who is difficult to you. And Again, when we're talking about unconditional love, it's not saying that we're in agreement or accepting the behavior that is going on that might cause, you know, consequences to what they're doing that they need to face, but we are still loving them through it. Step 11, see everyone you meet as a flawed, imperfect being just like you who has made mistakes, taken wrong turns, and at times has hurt others, yet who is struggling and deserves love. With intention, the important part again is intention, Give others unconditional love. In your mind, bathe them in love with warmth and acceptance. It does not matter where their, what their response is. What matters is that you have an open heart, an open heart connects with others, and that changes everything. And again, it kind of, for me, goes back to connecting with other people. And, you know, that's the point that I do this show for, is to help people heighten their celebrations and lessen their struggles through a positive focus. There are many things going on in the world that I can't change, but I can certainly change how I focus upon them. And the more I'm able to send love, the more I feel that love is expanding in the world. It does not mean that I agree with the people that I'm having challenges with, whether it's in my personal life or whether it's at a global level of not caring for what's going on. But the more that I stay in my own open heart, the more that I'm creating that space for other people. As I said, there, we all have consequences. We have consequences to the good things that we do in the world, and we have consequences to the fearful things we do. So it's being compassionate and having an open heart does not mean that you are condoning the behavior, but it is that you are able to see past it and extend your own love. And love does penetrate the deepest of fears. It may take time. You may not see it in the moment. But I promise you, the more that you can extend love and share kindness and compassion, the more you're going to see it in your own life. And then it's a big ripple effect. So um, just to say hi, hi, Mustafa. Um, yes, this will change people's lives for sure. Um, Juliet, just what I need. Oh, good, Juliet. I'm so glad. It's, it's always um, interesting to get the message that you need right when you need it. And that's generally when it happens because... You could have listened to me say this two weeks ago or two weeks from now and you not be in the space to receive it. So I really encourage everyone. It's going to be a, a shorter um, talk today because I usually have somebody else on that I, I can chat with. But if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I did forget to say at the beginning, if you need a virtual hug, you know I'm all about the hugs. Put in comments where you're joining me from and I'll be there in a moment to share a virtual hug. But the more that you can live with an open heart, and extend kindness and compassion. Let's re I also want to remind you, 
Kindness is not being a doormat. I'm not asking you to be nice as far as, but to be kind. And when we're faced with unkindness, we don't have to return it as unkindness. Now, certainly, if you're in a situation of physical um, concern, you need to protect yourself and make sure you're physically okay and emotionally okay. So you can absolutely tell somebody, stop saying that, you don't want to hear it. But to throw it back in their face and to start calling the blamer, you know, blaming the blamer, shaming the shamer, and all that kind of stuff is just creating more of the fear. And really what it's touching upon, it's not touching upon your truth, which is love. It's touching upon your own fear, which is scared. So when people react that way, it, it kind of hits you where you're scared. So it's, it's, it's common to react back with the same type of thing that's thrown at us. It requires practice. It requires great practice and patience and being gentle with yourself through the process and being gentle with them through the process. Again, compassion does not mean you're agreeing with the person. Living with an open heart doesn't mean that you're saying it's okay to do anything you want in the world, even if it inflicts harm and pain on others. But it does mean that you're willing to, to extend love into that situation because again I really believe that hurt people hurt others and to truly do harm whether it's in thought whether it's in words or whether it's in actions is coming from a deep hurt space so there are some people that maybe we can't impact with love that's possible but more of us we can impact with love especially if we catch people at the beginning of their feeling disconnected with people those people who are getting bullied and feeling so disconnected that they go out and do harmful things to many people because they have been bullied and beating themselves up inside for so many years that it finally manifests on the outside. So really look what you can do in your own life today. A smile, a hug, a kind word, or sitting in silence and extending love to yourself, to those who you do love, and to those that you disagree with. We really are all in this together. So I really appreciate you being part of the conversation today. And I will come and join you in the comments in just a few moments, just to, to remind you what's coming up next, um, next month. The book club will be, we'll be reading a book called Your Life's Purpose with Michael Lozier wrote it. And it's not gonna, he has great principles and practices on how to figure out what your purpose is, which is to live a life of joy. So after you've um, read the book and done the processes, it's not gonna say, oh, I should be a doctor, I should be work for the Peace Corps or anything like that, but it is going to help you define what makes you the happiest and how you feel validated and how you feel connected. Because the more we feel connected to others, which we are naturally anyway, but the more we feel it, the more we feel validated, the less we're going to react to negative situations, to harmful situations, and to scary situations. So that will be the July book. And then join me in September. There's still a few seats left. Um, and actually, we're not taking over the whole boat. So as soon as the whole boat sold out, I can't offer more. But we're going to Croatia for 10 days. Seven days is on a cruise. And I can post the link on how to join I'm um, teaming up with a very good friend of mine who is also a travel agent who has done this exact trip before. Um, she takes people on trips all the time. So we're really excited to be able to go and embrace other places in the world. That's the whole point is to get out there and to share some kindness with others. We'll be doing free hugs along the way. Mainly it's going to be 10 days in a beautiful space in Croatia. I've heard that I won't want to come home once I've been there. So. We will see, but I would love for you guys to join me there as well. Until next time, I'm not sure who yet Tuesday is I'm talking to, but I believe Thursday's conversation is again with Michael Lozier and John Inverity, and we're going to be talking about the emotion code and releasing trapped emotions around food choices and, and habits, and so that'll be a great conversation. So looking forward to talking to you again. I might just pop up here and there. I will plan it so I'm not holding my bouncy phone on you. <laughs> and remember, you matter. You matter to me, you matter to the world, and most importantly, you matter to you. So go out there and share your open heart today. Bye-bye.